Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gina. Few weeks ago, we looked at the simple harmonic motion. We found its solutions, and we looked at three examples. If you haven't watched the videos, I'll put the link up there. Today, we are going to talk about the simple pendulum, which we'll learn later in the video that simple pendulum is very similar to simple harmonic motion. Let's start with finding the equation of solution of an object that undergoes simple pendulum. Here's a sketch of a ball attached to a string, and the ball undergoes simple pendulum. We call the angle between the string and the vertical line theta, and the path along the displacement of the ball the arc length s. Theta and s are positive when they are on the right compared to the vertical line. And they are negative on the left. Let's draw the free body diagram acting on the ball. So there is the gravity force that is pointing directly downward, and tension force is toward the string. And we are going to define a moving coordinate that goes with the ball. There is the tangential direction that is perpendicular to the string, and the radial direction. That is parallel to the string and pointing toward the center of the circle. So if we project the gravity force onto the radial and tangential axis, we'll get a negative radial component of the gravity and a negative component for the tangential. Now let's use Newton's second law in the tangential direction. Newton's second law says net force. Equals to mass times acceleration, and here we only have the tangential component of the gravity force that is in the tangential direction. So F net also equals to tangential component of the gravity that is m g times sine theta, and it is negative. Here we are going to use small angle approximation, which is Sine theta for theta that is smaller than ten degrees, it approximately equals to theta. For theta that is smaller than ten degrees, so let's use this approximation into the Newton second law. So we get mass times tangential acceleration equals to negative mass times g times theta. The mass can cancel each other out, so we are left with tangential acceleration equals to negative g times theta. And tangential acceleration is the second derivative of the arc length. And remember from mechanics, theta is arc length divided by the radius of the circle. Here, the radius would be the length of the string L. So, second derivative of s is L times second derivative of theta. So, this equation becomes L times second derivative of theta equals to negative g times theta. Now, if we isolate for the second derivative of theta, we get second derivative equals negative g over l times theta. Does this equation look familiar? It is the same equation as equation of motion for simple harmonic motion. If we let omega square be g over l, then Equation of motion is second derivative of theta with respect to time equals negative omega square times theta, which is the equation of motion for simple harmonic motion. And we already found the solution for this differential equation, so now we can write theta as a function of time. It would be maximum theta or the amplitude times Cosine of omega times time plus the phase constant phi naught. But here the omega 
would be square root of g over l. Let's look at this example. How long must a simple pendulum be if it's to make exactly one swing per second? Remember the quantity period that we talked about a few weeks ago. Period is the time taken for one oscillation. And for one oscillation, it means the object goes back to its initial point. So imagine a pendulum. It will swing like this. Initial point, for example, is here. Then one period will be two swings. And in this example, we want one swing to be one second which means one period, which is two swings, will be two seconds. So the period T is two seconds because one swing is one second and it is half of the period. And we also learned from the previous lectures that period is two pi over omega. So from here we can solve for omega. We want the angular frequency to be 2 pi over 2 seconds. That is pi radians per second. And we just learned that the angular frequency for a simple pendulum, it is square root of g over the length. And we want this to be pi. Now we can solve for the length. So we take the square on both sides. g over l equals to pi square. So the length must be g over pi square, which is around 0 0.993 meters. And that is the end of the video. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.